What's going on, goats? Welcome back to Buku Bucks. My name is Ramo, and today I'm going to be showing you how a forex trader like myself passed a top step combine in just four days. I'll be breaking down every single trade, wins and losses to show you exactly how I did it. Okay, so let's start off by showing you proof. This is my top step dashboard. As you can see, my objectives have been completed and it took me about four trading days to do so. As I scroll down, you'll be able to see my average winning and losing trades, also alongside my win percentage. Underneath that will be all of the trades that I took and I will break those all down very soon. Here, I'll refresh the page to show you that this is legit. And as you can see, all these stats will be the exact same as shown before. So now let's go to trading view and break down every single trade that I took. I do want to give you a heads up that I am unable to go down to the lower time frames because I do not have the data anymore. But the good thing is I took screenshots of every single setup and trade even on the lower time frames. So even though I can't find it on replay mode, I will still be able to pull up the screenshot to show you exactly what I was thinking or doing in the moment. But for the first trade, I had a bearish bias. I was looking to short and few coming into London. The main reason was because I spotted distribution. I did like this area where price created a range. We had the manipulation to the upside and the price showed that it wanted to go lower by creating a new low here. If you are looking at this as distribution or simply put a break of structure, that is perfectly fine. But in this case, I really more so looked at it as a distribution area. But nonetheless, you can see price makes a low, creates a lower high and down to a lower low. So on this day, I was looking for price to pull back a lower high and then move on lower by creating a new lower low which gives us this first image here here this is my first poi which is going to represent my extreme order block and my second poi which will represent my continuation order block what i do is i allow price to come up into my pois and then look for a lower time frame confirmation entry to take a short in this case as price came up into the first poi i had no reason to short price actually broke above it then from here, I deleted it, used the extreme order block, which is represented right here on the 10 minute time frame. And once price tapped into it, I go down to a lower time frame to see if price wants to go short. From here, let's go ahead and delete this one. On the 30 second time frame, I seen a break of structure. Price had a structure low to a structure high. Price made a lower low, then a lower high. And then when price gave me a new lower low, this is the area that I decided to take a short from. From here, my stop loss was above this 30 second high because if price is truly in bearish structure, price should not break above this 30 second high. So as you can see, price comes up into the extreme order block, creates liquidity, price gives one run to the upside, taking out that buy sell liquidity while maintaining the 30 second extreme order block before pushing on lower. Once price did this, this is when I put my stop loss to break even and allowed price to ride on out. From here, you can see that my stop loss was triggered, which is really my break even position. So there really wasn't much of a loss here, but technically in top step, it is going to count it as a loss. That's why you can see back on the dashboard. If you go to the bottom of the screen, you'll see on August 14th, I had three total trades. I won one and lost two. So technically the break even trade was a loss. So that was one of the two that I had lost. But going back to the charts, we can see this was a break even trade but I did note that this potentially was a change of character. So going back to trading view here, let's go down to the five minute time frame. I was noticing that maybe my break even trade was just me closing too early. Potentially this down here was a nice change of character coming into play. Meaning price still had the potential to go short. So I decided to start to use the fib from this high to low, look for price to come up into premium, and then look for some type of short opportunity within the extreme order block here. I'm not sure if I have a I do. This is the order block I was using this last buy to sell candle and I was looking to short in this area. If I'm looking to short. I need to find a lower time frame confirmation entry to take that short. So here on the one minute time frame, I seen another one minute low way one minute high price gave me a lower low price pulled back into premium and then I sold off of a bearish engulfing candle somewhere within here. And from here, price made a new lower low lower high, lower low. By this point, I was able to modify and move my stop loss above this M1 high, minimizing my risk. If you know me, I do not like to partial. I like to minimize my risk by moving my stop loss. And that's how I manage my trades. But nonetheless, put it above this high and allow price to go on lower. At some point, I went break even and price ended up stopping me out once again. 
I'm not sure if I have an image of that. It looks like I do not have an image of it, but if you notice, price does come up into this area. I took some type of short opportunity in here. Price goes into profit and then stops me out as price comes on higher. Overall, if you notice, this trade setup wasn't terrible. Why? Because I was looking for this high to be respected and looking for price to give a pullback into new lows. If you notice, price came up making this high before making a new low somewhere down here. So price still did complete this overall analysis or overall move that I was looking for. The problem was, was that I was shorting too early. One thing I was doing wrong as well was not trading within my window. If you notice, this right here is my London session ICT kill window. And then over here is my New York session ICT kill window. So what I should have been doing, I should have actually been trading during these windows rather than in the middle of nowhere. But nonetheless, price did work out in the overall analysis, but I was not able to capitalize on this specific trade setup. So like I said, these are my first two losses that I took trading and view. Now you may be wondering where was my winning trade? Well, to be very honest with you, my winning trade came from me being very lucky. The reason being is because me being a forex trader, whenever I place a trade, including a stop loss and a take profit, whenever the stop loss or take profit is hit, or if I just manually close the position, the stop loss and the take profit go away. When you're trading futures, when you set a stop loss or a take profit, if you close your position manually, your stop loss or take profit will still be active. If your trade hits your stop loss, your take profit will be active. And if your take profit gets hit, your stop loss will be active. Meaning they don't close all at once. You have to manually close each one individually as they act as different orders. So please don't make the mistake that I did. I got very lucky in this case, but I'm just being brutally honest with you guys. This is one of the luckier trades that I had, but let's go ahead and break that down right now. So what happened in this case, when I was taking a short position somewhere in this area, represented by this image right here, stop loss was somewhere up here. I'm not sure exactly where the entry was. I can't go down to the lower time frames, but I had to take profit somewhere down here. The take profit is a buy limit order. As price came up, tapped my stop loss, which was that break even, it closed my sell order, including the stop loss order. But there was still a buy limit, which was supposedly, you know, the take profit or that short order. It was still resting down here. So what happened was news came out, spiked to the downside, triggered my buy limit order and ran to the upside. To be honest, when this happened, I thought I misclicked something or there was a keyboard shortcut that I don't know about Tradeabate or TradingView and price just ended up opening a position without me really knowing. But once I seen price was in profit, I quickly closed the position and then tried to figure out exactly what had happened. Like I said, what happened was I had a buy limit down here that I forgot to close. So please don't be like me. If you have a stop loss or take profit whenever you're in a position, please make sure you close both of them if you do not want them to be triggered, right? So take that from me. Please don't make a rookie mistake like I did. It is very easy to do and forget about. So please, once again, don't do what I did always close your positions and make sure you don't have any active pending orders in the markets if you don't want them now going back to the overall review of the trades you can see that this was the one winning trade that i took on this day and this gave me an average winning trade of 9.2k now coming back up to the graph you can see that my overall objective or my overall profit target has been reached but based on the second objective it states the best day cannot be greater than 50 percent of your total profits at this point in time, all my profits come from 100% of one day. So I think this is actually a great rule that they have in place for people like myself who mistakenly reach their profit target or for people that intentionally um, gamble their account away and try to reach the profit target in one day by getting one lucky trade. So once this happened, I basically need to double the amount because at this point, we'll say about $10,000 have been made. In order for this to be 50% of my total profits, I have to make another 10K. So the first 10K will be 50% of the overall 20K. So the good thing here is that I have a lot of wiggle room to work with, but the bad thing is I have to make another 10K. So let's go ahead and break down the second trade that I took that gets me up a little bit higher to finally reach that overall profit target that I need to get to. So on the second day, I decided to trade gold futures. On this day, my overall bias was bearish. I was mainly looking at the one hour time frame. I was seeing that price had a one hour low to a one hour high. Price made a lower low, so I was anticipating price to push on higher before continuing to make new low. So coming into London session, price was somewhere in this area. If you notice, price was down here still in discount. So I anticipated price to continue to push on higher until price got up into premium before looking for shorts. 
So once again, coming into London, I had a bullish bias. Coming down here to the 15 minute time frame, I was starting to use 15 minute internal structure. And from here at the opening of London, I had this nice 15 minute low to the 15 minute high, giving me a nice um, bullish range to work with. So from here, I went down to the lower time frame to kind of clear some things up and see more details. And this is what I had seen. Coming over here to this image right here, I had a nice trend line that I was looking for prices sweet to tap into the extreme order block before pushing on higher. Coming back to the chart on the five minute time frame, you can note that from this low to this high, price did come down into discount and did tap into this rally based rally. But the reason why I wasn't looking to long just yet was because technically London was not open just yet. One of my rules is to wait for London 3 a.m. EST to open before I even place a single trade. So at this time, London opened up and what I had noticed was a very nice trend line right here. But at the time, I actually plotted this entire thing up just like this, which you can see represented by the image. So I was anticipating prices sweep all the sell sell liquidity come deeper into discount, tap into the extreme roll lock before pushing on higher. But if you notice, price actually swept these lows before pushing on higher. So even though I was anticipating price to sweep all the lows, I did note that, hey, price did sweep these lows, which technically is sell sell liquidity. Price doesn't have to sweep all the sell sell liquidity that you may be um, looking for price to do. It can sweep whatever liquidity that it needs to do. So in this case, I took in consideration that potentially this is all the banks needed to sweep before pushing on higher. And I also did note that price broke above the range here, giving a potential nice look at accumulation. Whether you want to draw this as liquidity or a change of character, that's perfectly fine either or. Either way, I was looking at this as accumulation or if you want to be more specific, reaccumulation to push on higher. If this is a reaccumulation or accumulation, I should use my fib from swing low to swing high allow price to come with discount before pushing on higher. I'll go down to the three minute to see a tad bit more details. Here you can see price traces low to the high, price pulls back, takes out internal sell side liquidity, getting underneath the 50%, which is discount. And then from here, price actually popped above and gave us a new change of character to potentially work with. And this is where I was down on the one minute time frame. Not this one, not this one, but this one on the one minute time frame, you can see as price came back into discount, this is a one minute high down to a one minute low price spoke above. So then I decided to use a fit from this low to this high and repeat the exact same process. So coming back over here, let's go ahead and delete some of the stuff to make it very crystal clear. I use this fib from this low to this high price came down, came into discount, took out more internal sell sell liquidity while tapping into the extreme order block and discount as well. And then on the one minute, I can't plot it right here, but there was a slight one minute change of character once again, which I can show you in the image right here. This was like a little one minute high down to one minute low price broke above. And I decided to pull the trigger right as price gave me a chain of character. If I would have waited for price to pull back into discount again, that was definitely possible. But in this case, I was not too eager to wait any longer. I thought price would go higher from here. So I pulled the trigger with the stop loss underneath this M1 low. And as you can see, price did push on up to the upside. From here, I went ahead and trailed the M1 lows, I believe it was. Let's go ahead and see where my take profit was. In this case, I don't show my take profit. I'm pretty sure I can go ahead and find it. But nonetheless, I took a buy from somewhere down here. Something like this. Stop loss down here. And I believe at the very least, I always shoot for a one to three. And as you can see, my one to three was about somewhere here. And that's when I decided to, to uh, take my profits out of this position, right? So this is the winning trade that I had for GC gold futures on day two. And actually coming back to the dashboard, I can see that I profited 1.9K, which means I did not close at a one to three, more so a one to two RR on that day. But either way, still a winning day. Let's go ahead and break down the next trade the following day. So on the following day, I decided to trade gold futures once again. If you notice my previous bias of price making a new lower low did pan out. So at this point, I decided to continue the bearish analysis. At this point, I was using a swing high to swing low. I seen that price did come up to premium and I was looking for price to go ahead and make a new structure lower low on the one hour time frame. Going down to the 15 minute, we can see during Asia or at least the opening of Asia, price decided to start to give some type of bearish movement. Here we can see a 15 minute low, 15 minute high, Price makes a lower low. So at this point, I was looking for price to continue to push the downside. 
I also believe I used a fib from swing high down to swing low. I noticed price came in, took out some buy sell liquidity right above here, tapping into the continuation order block. I can't remember exactly which time frame I used. Let's see, maybe the 10 minute I could potentially utilize this last buy to sell move. Price tapped in, took out buy sell liquidity, and then price decided to push on lower. So at this point, it was looking pretty bearish in my opinion. I was looking to target Asia's low and overall look to target a one hour low. Although it didn't pan out in my favor, I'll still show you how I was able to capitalize on this specific move. So like I said, me usually being a London session trader, I wait for London to open. As price tapped into this POI, I went down to the one minute time frame, and price did give, whoops, I can't show the one minute, it's gonna be here. Price did give a one minute POS. Price made an M1 lower low, made a lower high, and even made a new lower low. I was looking to short somewhere in this area, but like I said, I strictly wait for London to open up rather than selling or buying in Frankfurt. So here, right at the three o'clock open, I decided to short. If price was truly an M1 bearish structure, price should not break above this M1 high. So I shorted here, stop loss above the M1 high and look to target new lows, which will be the Asia low or also the H1 low. So the lowest time frame I can go down is the three minute. Here it was the one minute BOS that I had seen and then took the one minute continuation move to the downside. Somewhere here as price is pushing on lower, here is another image of me holding my position even through this pullback and price got very close to my stop loss or my break even trade price continued to push on lower which we can see here this is that pullback here so price did get very close to my entry point but i still held through i actually closed in this area represented by this image right here and honestly the only reason why i closed it here is because this was a one to three rr like i said i could have targeted the asia low or even the h1 low because i did anticipate price to come all the way down here but the reason why i close it is because i was satisfied with my one to three rr trade and lucky enough right down to the tick price did hit my take profit and then reverse to the upside so like i said even though the overall analysis was wrong i was still able to capitalize on this specific move now coming back to the dashboard we can see that i made 3.5k on this day which is actually a tad bit over that one to three rr but nonetheless still a successful trade and coming back up to the graph we can see that i am steadily increasing but i still need to profit that extra amount of money to pass the challenge so even though I, at this point i'm up 15k basically i still have not passed i still need to make sure i hit that about 20k mark because like i said that 10k day cannot be 100 percent of my total profits it needs to be no more than 50 percent so these are still going very well but I still have a tad bit more to go to complete the entire challenge. So now for my final day, I decided to trade oil futures. On this day, I honestly wasn't sure which way price would go. Obviously price went bearish, but the reason why I decided to go bullish was due to the 15 minute time frame. On the 15 minute time frame, I saw a potential break of structure. This was the most recent structure high and then price made a higher high. So I considered this a break of structure. If this is truly a break of structure, price should not break underneath the structure low. So what I was looking for, I was looking for price to come down into discount as it did, of course. And then I was using a continuation order block somewhere in here and then an extreme order block somewhere within here. Unfortunately, I can't plot the exact order blocks that I was using, but as price taps in, I want to see how price reacts in order for me to confirm if I'm going too long or short. In this case, price took out the continuation order block, which is perfectly fine. This just shows me that most likely this is a sell sell liquidity sweep or an inducement to take out more liquidity before tapping into the extreme and pushing on higher. Once this happened, I went down to the M1 time frame to confirm my entry. This was the one minute high down to the one minute low. Price gave me a new M1 higher high. So at this point, I considered it a break of structure. If it is a break of structure, I should pull back preferably into discount before pushing on higher and not break the structure low. So what I did was I watched price pull on back. And to be honest, I took a buy or a long order off of this bullish candle for two reasons. Well, a couple of reasons, more than two. The first one was price gave me a nice bullish candle with lots of volume. So honestly, I did not anticipate price to continue to push back bearish as it looked like the buyers were stepping in right then and there. I was also buying because price tapped into the order block that I had plotted. Three, price also tapped into the 50%. I do like to see price tap underneath the 50%, which is my ideal area of discount, 
preferably my red line, which is my 62%, but 50% is perfectly fine as well. It just kind of sucks because if I do take a long, my stop loss is going to be a tad bit wider because I do have to put it underneath the M1 low. The next thing is I took a long position because I did not anticipate price to come down lower due to these equal lows. I said if price does come down lower, most likely it's going to want to take out these equal lows and invalidate my overall long bias. So once I've seen all these things happen, I decided to take a long rather than wait. But like I said, even though I do take a long in this area, I still need to put my stop loss underneath the one minute low. In this case, price pulled on back and it did come down to the 62% before pushing on higher. So the good thing is I did put my stop loss underneath the M1 low and allowed price to run on higher. So as price ran on higher, I managed my trade by moving my stop loss underneath the M1 lows. Here is a new M1 low to an M1 high. So my stop loss gets moved to underneath here. Here's a new M1 low to a new M1 high. So now my stop loss gets moved to here. And as I continue, I am able to modify my stop loss and move it in profit and trail price as it prints. Up here, I decided to take my profit for two reasons. One, I believe my RR was reached. And also at this point, I had completed my overall combine. So I had no reason to continue to hold this position and I just close it to pass the challenge. Now coming back to the dashboard, we can see that I hit all three objectives. I reached the profit target, I maintained the consistency target, and I did not exceed the daily loss limit. Very simple and just like that, combine passed within four days. Now I do wanna come down here and elaborate on the win rate. So although the win rate is 83%, I know some of us could argue that it technically is a hundred percent because the break evens really shouldn't be losses. But I do want to come out here and say that my win rate is not always this high. I also bring this up because you do not need a high win rate to be profitable. If you noticed, some of my analysis were actually wrong. I was looking for price to make a new high or a new low and price did the exact opposite. But what I'm able to do is I'm able to manage my trades properly and still find myself in a profitable position or at the very least break even. So once again, don't get too worked up on win rates. Some people will claim they have a 90, 95% win rate. But to be honest, all that really matters is that you are continuing to progress and profit in the market. Hopefully you liked this video. If you did, show some love by hitting that subscribe button. Hit that like button. It'd be much appreciated. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, join the free Discord. I am always in there dropping free knowledge and helping you guys out as much as possible. Thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one.